So, uh, first of all, welcome to this uh, webinar uh, being hosted from uh, Tomago in Newcastle, which is Arm Control Headquarters. Uh, my name is Phil Riley, and the uh, presentation is called Aging Assessment and Management of High Voltage Oil Fill Transformers. Um, so, what we're going to cover today is uh, these areas. First of all, the aging process of the paper insulation how we assess the aging process in the lab, and uh, got some case studies to go through to show you what problems look like. And then we'll finish off with uh, what we can do, life extension activities to deal with problems uh, with oil quality and uh, paper insulation problems. Um, if you've got any questions, please keep them to the end. Uh, there's also a, uh, a chat box that you can ask questions in. So um, that's available on the, the right-hand side of your page, I believe. And uh, yeah, we can pick up the, the questions at the end. I'll begin with the paper, the paper insulation. So these, uh, there's lots of paper in transformers, and uh, uh, it has a number of very important roles. First of all, it's a, an electrical insulator. Uh, it's also a physical structure within the transformer. So it separates, for instance, the copper windings, and this is a, a very important role. Craft paper is still typically used in most transformers. Craft means strong, and it also refers to the, the way the paper or the process by which the, the paper insulation is made. On the right-hand side, we have a chemical representation of cellulose. So we see we have repeating units of glucose joined together with a glycosidic bond. And degree of polymerization, or DP, is a measure of the length of these chains. And I'll speak more about DP throughout the presentation. An alternative to craft paper is the more expensive thermally upgraded paper. And this, uh, this age is less than normal craft paper because it's less sensitive to higher temperature, water, and the effect of acid. And this is partly due to the different chemical structure of thermally upgraded paper. Uh, it's produced in a different way. So, so cellulose paper plays a very important role in the internal structure of a transformer. So we manufacture transformers here in Newcastle and New South Wales. And the, the photo on the right is uh, of a core of a, uh, of a uh, transformer that we're manufacturing. Uh, in our factory in Newcastle. Uh, and we can see the uh, paper-covered windings, paper-covered leads, uh, the clamping structure. And you can just about see the, 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 ste the laminated steel core uh, in the center of one of these windings here. And on the left, I've listed some structural components of items that are included in the winding structure. Uh, we've just seen a photo of windings where the paper is brand new. The photo on the right is where the paper insulation is severely degraded. Uh, and when the paper is at end of life, uh, the transformer really needs to be either rewind, rewound or replaced. And uh, the accelerated aging of the paper will reduce the life of the asset. So the life of the, the paper is the life of the transformer. And the, the aging process of the paper is well documented. And I've listed some interesting statistics about how different things affect the, the, the rate of breakdown of the paper on the left. So overheating increases the rate of breakdown of the paper. Uh, for instance, water content increases. So if the water content of the paper by dry weight increases to 2%, uh, this can increase the rate of breakdown by a factor of 10. And uh, sources of moisture and transformer include ingress from the atmosphere, oxidation of the oil, breakdown of the paper by water, and also breakdown of the uh, paper by heating. Also, acids break down the paper. Um, I thought it'd be interesting to include a transformer reliability survey or some information uh, in the presentation. Uh, so this... Uh, this uh, presentation was this this reliability survey was published in late 2017 uh, and here are some headlines uh, 
The, the survey includes uh, 167,000 op transformer operating years. Uh, the transformers were surveyed across 21 different countries between 1996 and 2010. And so one of the, uh, one of the points the, the authors of the survey made was that the, the rate of failure of transformers is low and it's less than 1% across all voltage classes. And that's very low, but there are very many thousands of transformers out there, so uh, um, th there is a possibility for, for some unpleasantness. Uh, they also said that uh, short circuits and lightning strikes are, are more likely to cause problems with unreliability than the aging of the paper insulation and the oil insulation. And uh, this, uh, this picture on the right is, is from our transformer factory in Newcastle, and um, this is a 25 MVA transformer. It was struck by lightning in 2019. The, the winding was, was damaged, and uh, we, we had to do a full rewind on the transformer. So, so, so lightning and short circuits cause problems, but also the, uh, the, the state of the paper, the condition of the paper can also affect how well the transformer withstands, for instance, physical forces associated with short circuits. Um, they looked at uh, substation, the authors looked at substation type transformers and they, they identified that the, the windings was the, the main location of failures in these type of transformers and failures in the, the windings, the tap changer and the bushings accounted for 80% of problems. Common failure modes being partial discharge, tracking and flashovers and in uh, Generator step-up type transformers, uh, they said that uh, overheating in local hotspots uh, were the uh, main causes of problems uh, and causes of failures. So when the paper ages, because of uh, any of the, the, the reasons I've outlined so far, the consequence is loss of mechanical strength of the paper. So when we manufacture a transformer, uh, the and when the paper's been through the dry out process in the, in the ovens in the factory, the DP or degree of polymerization of the paper should be greater than 1,000. And once the transformer's in operation, uh, the, uh, it's possible that the paper can be exposed to environmental conditions, so overheating or high levels of water, um, which can degrade the paper. And uh, when the DP of the paper falls to 200, the, the paper is thought to be at or approaching end of life. And at this point, the mechanical strength of the paper is approximately only 30% that of new paper. And the DP won't uniformly be the same. It could be lower uh, in warmer parts of the transformer, such as the hot spot. And uh, when the paper's at end of life, the transformer can continue to operate for years. So it doesn't necessarily mean that the thing will fail straight away. However, the risk of failure increases because the reduced mechanical strength of the paper uh, means that the paper is less able to withstand uh, forces associated with short circuits and large inrush currents. And the occurrence of these forces, in addition to the rate of change of the DP, uh, are things that are taken into consideration by asset managers when deciding whether to keep the transformer in operation or take it out of service. Now, uh, this picture on the right is of a transformer. It was a spur furnace transformer that was sent to us by one of our customers for some urgent upgrade work. The transformer replaced failed because of a short circuit event. So uh, we were able to help the customer. Um, and the point is that uh, short circuits can cause transformer failures. Um, a loss of mechanical strength in the paper can be monitored easily uh, with a routine oil sample. So we do furan testing and uh, loss of mechanical strength from the paper insulation is often achievable. So the, the electrical insulating properties of the paper are unchanged by the aging process. Uh, so when the DP is 1,000 or when the DP is a 200, the, uh, the electrical insulating properties of the paper uh, are the same and this is important because the paper insulation is an electrical insulator. But um, st laboratory studies have shown that um, the conductivity of the paper can increase by a factor of 500 
when the oil is heavily oxidized and the acid levels are high. And uh, when the papers, uh, if a transformer is in a circumstance where the, the DP is low, say end of life, and the oil is heavily oxidized, um, you know, we believe that the, the risk of a dielectric failure is as high as a mechanical failure of the paper. So this is why it's important to maintain the oil in good condition. So the, the paper and transformers can uh, degrade in a number of different ways. So breakdown by water in the oil or the paper is called hydrolysis. So a transformer should have low oil moisture levels, so ideally less than 10 parts per million. And this is for mineral oil. And the water content in the paper should be less than 0.5% by dry weight. And if uh, during operation this increases to 5%, it's believed that the rate of aging of the paper can increase by a factor of 20. And the, the breakdown of the paper by water produces acids. These become dissolved in the oil. They can be dissolved in the, become dissolved in the paper, and this can further degrade the paper. Uh, Seagrave published a technical brochure in 2018 regarding the life management of paper insulation in transformers. So this uh, this uh, graph on the right is one of the experiment one of the experiments they published, uh, and it looks at the effects of different organic acids that are produced by the breakdown of paper by water and how they further attack the paper, which we, we can see by a reduction in DP over time of the experiment. And so uh, I'll just pick one of the acids, formic acid. Uh, this has a very strong effect upon the breakdown of the paper, and it's produced by the breakdown of the paper by elevated water in the oil. Another mechanism for the breakdown of the paper is by heating, elevated temperature. And this is known as pyrolysis. And a widely quoted statistic is that the, the rate of aging of the paper uh, is thought to double for every six to eight degree rise in operating temperature. So when we test oil samples, uh, we look at uh, the levels of carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide dissolved in the oil. Uh, we don't want to see, uh, if we see, for instance, carbon monoxide above 10,000 ppm, sorry, 1,000 ppm, uh, this, is a, this is a marker for yeah, pyrolysis. And also we look at the, the ratio of carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide. And if the water levels in the oil are going up and the furanic compounds in the oil are going up, uh, which we measure from an oil sample, then this is also a sign or a marker that uh, pyrolysis is occurring. So on the right, we see a chemical representation of the breakdown of the paper due to pyrolysis between 100 and 200 degrees Celsius. So we see cellulose on the left being degraded, and it produces furanic compounds here and here. Water is broken, produced at these two steps here, uh, and this is why water levels may go up. And the water levels can further attack the paper by hydrolysis. This furanic compound, 5-HMF, is unstable. It degrades to produce 2-phal. 2-phal is stable, and we use its concentration via the Chen-Dong equation to calculate the degree of polymerization. This uh, breakdown product here, CH2O, is formaldehyde. It rearranges to produce formic acid. And as we saw on the previous page, formic acid has a strong effect uh, on the paper, so it further degrades the paper. So heating produces water and acid, which further degrade the paper. So we have a lab here in Newcastle called Verico. It's uh, part of the AMP control group. It's, it's an independent uh, entity within AMP control. And uh, we do uh, oil sampling, oil testing, um, and uh, regular uh, tests that we recommend for assessment of condition of the paper include water content, furan analysis, acidity, dissolved gas analysis, and particle count. So we look for discrete differences in test data to give us clues as to what might be happening to the paper. So heating, oxidation, breakdown of the paper by water produces water, and so we can see uh, increases in water level in the oil from routine testing. 
Uh, we recommend that you use a 50 mil glass syringe. Uh, you can see the 50 mil glass syringes just here. So if you use one of these for uh, your sampling, um, the oil doesn't come into contact with the atmosphere, so you avoid contamination of the sample with atmospheric moisture. And we also recommend that you take a flush or flush the drain valve before you take the sample to avoid any contamination with free water that may have collected or particles over the previous year. Um, Furan analysis from an, oil, from an oil sample gives us a, an, an average estimate of the DP or mechanical strength throughout the paper. Paper hydrolysis uh, produces furans, which can degrade into, to produce acids. Paper oxidation also produces acids. An acid level is one of the tests that we do for an oil sample. Uh, we look at uh, elevated levels of carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, as I said, uh, for, for markers for pyrolysis of the paper, and we measure the levels via a test called dissolved gas analysis. And it's important to use a 50 mil glass syringe for this because we wish to avoid losing gases from the oil sample. Also, if we see uh, large increases in particles via particle counting and a reduction in the breakdown voltage, especially in the presence of water, a, hyp a hypothesis we can consider is that paper is being degraded. And this is because paper breakdown releases cellulose fibers into the oil, and these can affect the breakdown voltage of the oil in the, in the presence of water. <clears throat> This is the first case study. It's a 10 MVA, stepped down from 66 to 11, and it was manufactured in 1986. So I've split the test results into dissolved gas analysis on the left, oil quality in the middle, and then furan testing on the right. So the uh, dissolved gas analysis doesn't indicate any significant problems. There's no partial discharge, heating and arcing. The, more, the oil quality levels are Oil quality test results are a bit more interesting. So uh, the moisture levels are higher than what I would like. They're still acceptable according to IEC 60422, but they, uh, they're elevated, so they could be, they may be affecting the condition of the paper or having an effect upon the condition of the paper. The acid levels are terrible, and these will be affecting the condition of the paper. The interfacial tension levels are low, which tells us that the oil is, has, uh, breakdown products from oil breakdown and paper breakdown in the oil, and the breakdown voltage is, is still okay. Um, the furan test results on the right ev evaluate the condition of the paper, and we can see that the two foul levels are very high, and these correspond to a, a DP, an estimated DP of 314, which is very low. So the paper is uh, uh, significantly degraded. Remember that uh, end of life is DP 200 and below. So uh, the, the, the risk of failure due to mechanical problems associated with degradation of the paper is, is evident. Uh, and the, uh, also the uh, heavily oxidized condition of the oil means that there's a possibility or a higher risk of uh, a uh, um, failure due to uh, conductivity of the paper increasing. So a dielectric failure of the paper. So, this transformer would benefit from acid filtration. Uh, another case study is a 45 MVA transformer, uh, stepping down from 132, uh, manufactured in 2008. And again, we've got the test results split into dissolved gas, oil quality, and furan testing. So the uh, dissolved gas analysis results indicate no problems, no significant problems. Uh, no partial discharge, heating or arcing, based upon the numbers on the left. Um, oil quality results are, are very interesting. So the, the water levels are acceptable, uh, less than 10 ppm. The acid levels are questionable, according to some of the standards that we follow. Uh, and they've increased from 0.03 to 0.06 in 2018. And the interfacial tension levels are only just acceptable for this voltage class and the DDF power factor results at 90 degrees are elevated. So the interfacial tension results and the dielectric dissipation factor results tell us that there's some contamination of the oil, uh, possibly with uh, products of breakdown of the paper or the oil. 
And the few end test results are very interesting. In 2017, the DP was 1,000. In 2018, it decreased to 744. So that's a very big decrease in the space of a year. And I flagged the rate of degradation of the paper as a problem. So uh, there's, there's an issue with acid level. So this would also benefit from uh, acid filtration to prevent further breakdown of the paper. Just moving into the final part of the presentation, um, which is life extension. Uh, the paper insulation uh, of both of the previous transformers we've just reviewed is in uh, late and early, early stages of degradation, respectively. So limiting the aging process uh, is a priority for both of the transformers, because this will help extend service life. And on the left, I've listed some oil maintenance options that can be considered for this and other transformers, where there are problems with oil quality. So each of these either maintains or returns the oil to a state that doesn't degrade the paper insulation. This will prevent further occurrence of paper breakdown, and so theoretically will extend service life of the transformer. The paper insulation can't be returned to a new condition, but the oil insulation can. Reclamation to clear the oil and the paper insulation of acid would be, good, would be, would be a good idea for both of the transformers we just looked at. The same process can be deployed to deal with elevated water levels. Uh, remember that elevated water increases paper breakdown, or it can. Degassing can re will reduce oxygen levels and reduce the risk of uh, oxidation of the paper. We can also replace the oil with uh, new mineral oil or with natural or synthetic esters. And it's important to maintain sufficient levels of oxidation inhibitor as this will prevent oxidation of the oil and development of acid and sludge. So oil is made from or contains organic molecules uh, they can react with oxygen in the oil uh, to produce byproducts, some of which are, are less soluble. And uh, these less soluble products will float around in the oil as microscopic particles, as we see in the image below at the bottom. Uh, if the problem is not dealt with, the, uh, the risk is that uh, these microscopic particles can increase in volume until you have large deposits on internal surfaces, including on the windings. The sludge is acidic, so there's a risk that uh, it can degrade the paper. Uh, and also it can reduce oil flow around the windings, which can lead to localized overheating, uh, which can uh, further degrade the paper. So one of the life extension activities I mentioned in the previous slide was uh, oil reclamation. So this, this is done, this is, a, this is a type of transformer oil filtration. It's done when the transformer's online. Uh, we, we maintain a fleet of mobile filtration units. Um, and the schematic on the bottom shows you how we connect one of the filtration units to the transformer through the conservator. And uh, we pump hot oil around 70 degrees Celsius uh, very slowly through the transformer, and this will uh, leach off any uh, dirty oil from the transformer core from the internal surfaces. And we'll take this, uh, we'll pump this back, or pump it to the filtration unit, and we'll, we'll do several passes uh, through the filtration unit, and this, this will improve the oil quality. The schematic on the top shows you, uh, uh, it's another view of how the filtration process works. So we bring oil into the filtration unit and the vacuum and we heat it. And this uh, dual action reduces water level in the oil and also uh, degasses the oil as well. And then we'll filter the oil and then we'll pass it through these full reserve columns. Uh, and we'll do several passes, as I said, this will remove the acid levels. And then we'll finally filter the oil, add oxidation inhibitor, and then we'll disconnect from the transformer. So this is a means to, uh, I guess, refurbish the oil, which is good for the environment. And also the, the systems that we use, uh, we can reactivate the fuller's earth when it becomes saturated, and we can do so up to 300 times, which, which is good as well. So we don't just use the fuller's earth once, we, uh, we can use it many times. So reclamation removes uh, 
acid from the oil and the windings uh, via Fuller's Earth treatment, and uh, we can return the oil to new specifications, and this will uh, prevent any further breakdown of the, the paper by the oil. And just to finish off, um, over the life of your transformer, uh, apply, think about applying some of the following points to help you uh, maintain the condition of the paper and so extend the life of the asset. So uh, maintain sufficient levels of oxidation in the oil. So test, the, test it every year. Test oxidation inhibitor from your oil samples every year. Uh, when it falls below uh, a certain level, take guidance from your lab and add more. So it's a simple process. So monitor the uh, operating temperature. Uh, ensure that the uh, oil temperature indicator and the winding temperature indicator are working correctly. Um, prevent uh, ingress of moisture and oxygen uh, into the transformer. Uh, so uh, replace gaskets where you need to. Uh, regularly inspect the silica gel breathers. Uh, where there are problems with the oil quality, do filtration to remove moisture levels uh, and acid levels. And uh, if you've got high levels of uh, water in the paper, you can, uh, you can simply attach a trolley filter to the transformer for a week. This will reduce the water levels in the oil. This will draw water out of the paper. And you may have to repeat this a few times, but uh, this is a way to reduce the uh, water content in the paper and this is important for life extension of the transformer. Uh, and an important question to ask is when, when should you apply the maintenance? When do you do the filtration? Well, uh, I mentioned earlier a, a technical brochure that Seagrave published relative to the, the life management of the paper. There's a reference uh, here. Um, I've taken this model. This, they, they published this model in their technical brochure. And what they say is do your filtration or your maintenance before the DP falls below 500. So this is something you would measure from your furan testing. Um, they say that uh, what we believe in the industry is that um, even if the DP decreases, uh, you know, that's uh, okay to a point, but certainly it's not until, uh, it's when the DP falls to 500 and 600 that the mechanical strength of the paper becomes affected. So if you do your maintenance before this, uh, you, uh, theoretically can uh, prevent this loss of life to the paper insulation and so the transformer. So uh, that's, that's me finished. So uh, I guess um, I'll hand over now to any questions from the audience. Thank you. Somebody's asked the question about do you lose previous oil results if you do Fuller's Earth treatment? So what can happen is uh, uh, the furan uh, paper breakdown releases furanic compounds into the oil. We measure the concentration to calculate DP. The regeneration process, the Fuller's Earth treatment, takes the Fuller's Earth out of the oil. And so for a number of years afterwards, we, we think up to six years afterwards, the, um, the, the furan test data will be affected. And so the paper will be uh, certainly, it will appear newer than what it actually is. So what we recommend before you do your Fuller's Earth treatment, actually do furan testing. So you've got a benchmark to look back on. Thank you. Yeah, we can do filtration uh, uh, online on, on transformers, yes. Yes, oil fill transformers, yes. Why are we still using paper? That's a good question. I'm not going to answer that, though. Uh, I think the, the craft paper, I guess craft paper is the, uh, uh, the most uh, cost-effective way to make a transformer. There are alternatives, thermally upgraded paper, also uh, things like Nomex, uh, which is uh, an alternative. Uh, but these are more expensive. And uh, certainly, we can't use Nomex at uh, uh, above certain voltages. How do we take a sample with a syringe? So we, we, connect a, we connect the syringe to a transformer via the, the drain valve as normal. We use a reducer uh, to connect uh, 
the reducer, and we, we connect the reducer to the syringe via some uh, plastic tubing, internal diameter, four millimeters. Uh, the transformer should fill by gravity uh, if there's a positive pressure, uh, and this will fill the, uh, the syringe, and it's important uh, not to get any bubbles in the syringe, so you need to get them out if you get any into, the, into your sample. Um, and it's also worth checking first, if, you, if you're sampling from a, a sealed transformer, whether there's actually a, a positive pressure or a negative pressure. And if there's a negative pressure, you can't take the sample. How does standard transformer oil compare with FR? I think, yeah, you mean FR3. Um, so FR3 is a natural ester. Um, so we can do very similar tests. So we can do dissolved gas analysis, and we do see some differences uh, in the test data for natural esters, and also synthetic esters such as uh, MIDEL7131. Um, but we, we, have, uh, we have enough knowledge now to be able to correctly diagnose problems, uh, and also from dissolved gas analysis, and we have a very good understanding about the differences in terms of oil quality, so moisture levels, acid levels, uh, and other tests as well. And we can also spot paper breakdown in these alternative fluids via uh, just standard furan testing. Can the lab? Um, we, we don't use, uh, we can't calculate DP uh, from uh, furan testing from natural and synthetic esters. What we look for is increasing levels of 2-FAL, which is one of the furanic compounds. And this, as a mineral oil, will tell us that the, the, the uh, paper insulation has been degraded. So we can do your furan test. We don't calculate the degree of polymerization, but we do look for increases in, uh, in 2-FAL. In DJ analysis, what value of nitrogen indicates the condition? Look, with uh, the significance of oxygen and nitrogen from dissolved gas analysis uh, is that it can tell us if, uh, if for instance, a, a sealed trans... I use nitrogen and oxygen levels uh, to uh, uh, see whether the, uh, the seal on a hermetically sealed transformer is, is degraded. Um, if the ratio of oxygen to nitrogen changes, this can indicate there's problems with the the, uh, air pres the air preservation system on a transformer, uh, and certainly uh, we'll make them recommendations for a, uh, a, a, an inspection of the gaskets or the, the air preservation system, uh, and uh, we'll possibly make recommendations to degas the oil just to uh, keep the oxygen levels low. Um, if you add oxidation inhibitor levels uh, to the correct uh, levels, um, you won't create any negative effects. Um, we can do testing on an oil sample on FR3, which is a natural ester, uh, or synthetic esters, such as MIDEL7131. We can do the same type of testing. Uh, we can also do... Uh, I think we mainly do retrofills of mineral oil fill transformers with these alternative fluids. Um, but certainly the, we are able to do uh, filtration. Uh, so we can, um, I guess, with uh, do, your, do your annual oil testing. If you've got an FR3 fill transformer, look for overheating. Um, monitor the water levels. Uh, monitor the acid levels. So that's the same. Um, and just follow the recommendations for your lab. Uh, you do particle count testing. Uh, I think it's ISO 4406. That's the standard that we use to interpret the data. There's information within IEC 60422 as well, which helps us understand the, uh, the significance of the particle counting results. If you've got any oil analysis results that indicate a problem, you can send them through and I'll, I'll review them for you. prevent further deterioration of the oil. Um, 
I guess the, uh, you know, it's important to keep the oxygen levels and the oil low. So I think that it's, uh, I'll come back to you with a response on this one, Dev. I've got your email address. That's correct. Yes, yeah, so uh, all of the major transformer manufacturers uh, mm -hmm. use craft paper uh, in their transformers. Uh, cost of furan testing is similar to dissolved gas, so just ask your lab to do your furan testing. Um, it's a pretty complicated test method, such as dissolved gas, gas analysis, so it's a bit more expensive than uh, the likes of moisture content testing, but it's still within $100 per sample. Additives, uh, I guess we're talking about additives in the oil, oxidation inhibitors. I think that's what you're talking about. Uh, these prevent, uh, as I said, oxidation of the oil, uh, which can develop into acid and sludge, which breaks down the paper. So the role is uh, they, they help control the condition of the oil to prevent breakdown of the paper. Uh, not yet. Methanol, ethanol, uh, we don't do that test as yet. Uh, good question. Um, I know Seagray have just uh, last year published a, an updated technical brochure on furan testing, uh, sorry, methanol testing to evaluate the condition of the paper. Um, yeah, it's, uh, th there seems to be some benefits, but we're not quite there yet with uh, the, the, the technology and understanding of converting the data to uh, uh, what the, uh, this relates to in terms of the condition of the paper. Um, if there was localized heating, would it be detectable in the oil sample? You might see some increases in carbon monoxide and dioxide in the oil, yes. Are online testing devices available and reliable? or should the sample lab testing process be used in all cases? I guess many transformers, certainly larger generator step-up transformers, do have online dissolved gas analysis monitors. Uh, these are reliable pieces of equipment, and uh, certainly with these transformers, with these online monitors, uh, it's also it's a good idea just to once a year take an oil sample. It doesn't cost much, and it just ensures that uh, the, the data that you're getting from your, uh, your, your online monitor is correct. I think that's everything. Uh, so, uh, look, thank you, uh, thank you, everyone, for joining in. Uh, also, for your questions, if you've got any lab reports that indicate a problem, my email address is at the bottom of the page, and you can send them through, and I'll review them for you. Thank you.